Hi everyone. Let's see the essence of Brownian motion. We have a particle suspended in a container filled with a liquid and we have zoomed in on a small section of the container, say via microscope. So what do we expect to see when we start observing the particle? We see that the particle is experiencing this jittery motion. So naturally we ask what's causing the motion? The answer is in the invisibles. Liquid molecules far smaller than what we see in the microscope. If we zoom in on say a tiny two-dimensional cross section, we will see there is a large number of liquid molecules which are in motion, colliding with each other and with our Brownian particle. When they hit the Brownian particle, it jitters. By how much really depends on the speed, the particle and the other conditions. If we increase the temperature, we shall see things moving faster, but one can always standardize the conditions to get the basic model, or shall we say the standard Brownian motion, which can then be scaled to fit other conditions. Firstly, the liquid molecules are all around the particle, so the motion is happening in three dimensions, but we are going to focus on one dimension. In this two-dimensional view, we see there will be liquid molecules on the opposing side, when the molecules hit the particle from the upper side, it moves to the lower side and when it gets hit from the lower side, it moves upwards. So it is like a random walk on a fast scale, tiny up and down movements happening very fast because large number of collisions are happening very fast and when we observe the process, we are actually seeing the cumulative effects of many collisions and we know normal distribution arises naturally in such situations, so we shall expect the net movement of the particle observed over a small time interval to follow a normal distribution. To see it more clearly, let's plot the position of the particle along one of the dimensions over time. We can replace the 3D by 2D. So imagine we are observing the particle from above. It is now moving in the two dimensions because we can't tell the movements along the depth. Let's say we want to plot its position along the vertical axis. So let's rewind to the initial position and use its position along the vertical axis to define the reference line. Call this zero. So in terms of the charts we see every day, this is where x axis crosses the y axis. We can create another diagram in which the x axis represents time and the y-axis, the position of the particle along the y-axis as a function of time. The particle is at zero, at time zero. When we observe its position a moment later, we see it has shifted downwards and we just use the straight lines to connect the observations. It would be easier to see the connection between the two diagrams if we just draw a line to represent the distance of the particle from zero and then even better if we add a reference line showing its current position across the two diagrams. In the second diagram, we are drawing the trajectory of a one-dimensional Brownian motion as a function of time. We are just recording its position along the vertical axis over time and connecting the points via a straight line. Now let's pause for a moment. Where is the particle going to go next? It can go up or down, ignoring the movement along the x-axis. So we can see the average is going to be zero and if we observe it only after a very brief moment, it probably won't be too far from its current position. But if we fall asleep and wake up much later, then it would have most likely gone far in either direction. So one can assume that the mean of the movement is zero and the variance will scale with time. Longer you leave it unobserved more uncertain would you be as to where to find it. So from a simple observation of a physical process, we can deduce a mathematical model of a stochastic process. By the way, the variance will scale with time, but just for the standard model, one can assume conditions in which the variance scales directly with time. And this is the setting used to define a standard Brownian motion. Now we can use this model to simulate the Brownian motion without having any access to a microscope. Let's say we start at time zero with process value at zero. We know the current position, so the probability is concentrated at zero. 
Now let's say our next observation is after a time interval of delta t. As we mentioned earlier, the particle position after delta t will be normally distributed around the current position. If the size of the time step is smaller, then the probability will be concentrated around the current position. Of course, it can travel large distances, but the probability of the large movement is smaller, so the distribution is peaked. Now, as we increase the size of the time step, the distribution will spread and the probability of large movements will increase. For reference, let's draw a line at 1. So we see the probability of the process moving beyond 1 increases as we increase the size of the time interval. Now let's say we fix the time step. So we observe the particle with this fixed time interval. And now let's try to simulate a Brownian motion path in one dimension. We start at 0. The position after delta t will be normally distributed around the current position. We draw a random number from this distribution and call this the position of the particle and then connect it with the previous position. We then recenter the distribution at the new position and move ahead to the next observation. Draw another random from the distribution and then connect with the previous observations. We continue this process of recentering the distribution, moving one step ahead, drawing a random and then connecting with the previous observation. Here we get an extremish random. And now there's nothing stopping us from using this Brownian motion to model a wide range of phenomena. Stock price, for example, moved because of the buy and sell decisions of the investors. So the transactions replace collisions and the news replace the kinetic molecular theory, but the maths remain unchanged. Please give a thumbs up if you'd like to see more videos like this one and I look forward to seeing you in the next.